In this uh, section, we're going to talk about policies. So let's go into policies here over on the left. And let's make a new policy. So we're going to call this, um, you know, we've been working with a test company called XYZ Landscaping. So we're going to go ahead and make a policy specific to XYZ Landscaping. Usually, you would want to set up a, a separate policy for each one of your customers. Although I suppose in theory, you could set up a, a policy that worked for multiple customers. But I think most people want to, uh, want to create a separate policy for each customer. Okay, so let's go through some of the options within the policy. So notifications is kind of the first uh, option down, and this is kind of important. Some customers don't want to have their antivirus software ever pop up notifications for their users because then the users are asking them questions about, hey, what do I do with this? Oh, it's my antivirus software. So just to bypass all those questions, a lot of times people will go in here and turn off notifications. Um, they even have this enable silent mode, which is just basically basically the user the end user gets no notifications about their antivirus if we go one screen down into settings this is where you can put a password on your bitdefender software so if you don't want your end users you know turning off their scan engine or whatnot you can put a password in here and then if they ever went into it turn off their scan engine they would have to um, have the password to do that um, communication, this has to do with, you know, where it updates and whatnot. Um, chances are you won't have to ever edit this section. And uh, same here under this update section. By default, Bitdefender uh, updates hourly. I suppose maybe some people could say, well, that's more than necessary. I just want to have it update once a day. Feel free to uh, change that if you like. All right, if we go down a section down to anti-malware, this is where we actually change how Bitdefender scans a computer. So we would come into on access, you can click on uh, either the radio buttons here, or you can click on settings over here on the right, and you can get into a section that gets very granular with, you know, what you want it to scan, how you want it to scan, and then actions you want to take when it finds files that are bad. So that's down here at the bottom under scan actions. I'm going to go ahead and leave this default. I just wanted to show where this was available. All right. Uh, another important section here under anti-malware is this settings section. Sometimes we have to make exclusions. Let's say there's business software on your network that you wanted to, you know, make sure that uh, didn't get interfered with by its antivirus software. What we do here is we can click custom exclusions and then we can put a file path in here. So let's say we were using QuickBooks on our network and it lived in a in a directory C colon QuickBooks. We could go ahead and put that in here, hit the plus sign, and that's basically telling Bitdefender, hey, leave that directory alone. We're, we're sure that that directory is safe. F fairly common that uh, people would have at least one or two directories on their network that uh, needed to be excluded. All right, down here under firewall, pretty much exactly uh, what you would think this is, is exactly what it is. This is where you can go in, you can make special rules for ports. Um, they, uh, they kind of separate by network adapter, which is kind of cool. So you can have one set of rules for your wired adapter, one set of rules for your Wi-Fi. Um, it's just kind of nice. You know, you have people that are using this on laptops and they're using their laptop at Starbucks and you want to, you know, maybe make a custom rule that when they're in a public place, they have a little uh, stricter protection. Content control, um, there's a ton of great stuff you can do in here. Um, they have a whole web control section under web, where if we um, click web access control and then click settings, we can actually dictate what websites we're allowing our web our users to go to and you can do it on a schedule so let's say we wanted to say between 9 a.m. and noon we're gonna really lock down web browsing but from 12 to 1 we're actually gonna allow our, our uh, employees a little bit more freedom like maybe they're on their lunch break we're gonna let them access Facebook or something like that if you go into the category section and select web categories filter there's a little section down here called web rules and if you click on this web rules section you can do blocking and allowing by category so let's say we just didn't want anybody to ever go to a gambling website we could click down this and select block and now our users are not going to be able to go to a gambling website um, great great 
um, database here that Bitdefender runs themselves. This is a fantastic feature and um, blocking websites is getting a lot more common within business and uh, highly encourage um, and encourage people to check this out. I will say this, you do want to really test this when you deploy it because you know I've certainly seen times where people have put rules in place and then oh whoops I blocked something I didn't mean to block. All right, so that's how that section works. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of there. They also have a data protection section here where you can make uh, rules based on um, keywords. Like, let's say I never wanted uh, people to ever put emails out that have social security numbers. They can make a data protection rule. Uh, device control allows me to actually control hardware devices. So if I want to completely lock down, um, say, CD and DVD drives, I could do that in here. I can also lock down people's usage of um, USB thumb drives. That's probably the most used uh, feature here in device control is monitoring and, and stopping people's usage of USB thumb drives. So that's just some quick highlights of what goes into creating a policy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save my policy. And then let's talk about how to apply this policy. So there's my new policy, XYZ Landscape. Now I'm going to go back to my network section and I'm going to drill down into my XYZ landscape company and I'm going to apply this policy to Chad's computer. That's the test computer that we've been working on through these videos. So we can either right click on computers and groups and click assign policy which is going to assign the policy to the entire container or I can select Chad's computer individually click assign policy here's the policy assignment window I'm going to pick my policy from the drop-down box, click XYZ Landscape, remember that was the name of my policy, and then hit Finish. That's how easy it is to assign a policy. As you can see, a lot more goes into creating the policy versus assigning it. The assignment part is very simple, and like I said, you can do it at the container level with a right-click. So you'll notice as I right-click on these containers up here, I have the uh, same option to assign policy.